Hi, welcome back. I'm Scientist Kate. This is Grade 3, Weather and Climate. Chapter 1, Lesson 4, Making Sense of Weather Data. For this lesson, you're not going to need any materials to do an investigation, but you will need these two documents. One is a set of evidence cards that we're going to be sorting. The other one is a document called Reflecting on Evidence that you can find in your student investigation notebook. Other than that, all you need is curiosity and excitement to learn. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, so as you know, we're working with the Wildlife Protection Organization to look for the perfect place to put an orangutan reserve. We're trying to compare weather data from these three islands to decide which place would be the hottest, rainiest, best place to put the orangutans. Remember that orangutans only live on two islands in the whole world? Borneo and Sumatra? Well, let's check out the weather data for one day on Borneo. I'm looking at where it says temperature, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember when we tried to visualize what a temperature felt like? Can you visualize what 80 degrees Fahrenheit might feel like? I'll give you a second to think about it. Do you think it's warm or do you think it's cold? Let's compare it to our temperature benchmarks. Do you remember the temperature benchmarks from last time? They show us different temperatures so that we can help visualize pretty much any temperature we want. So according to these temperature benchmarks, where would you put a star on this document to show where 80 degrees might be? I'm gonna put it right here. 80 degrees probably feels like a little warmer than your classroom, but not hot enough to melt chocolate. So now let's look at the precipitation for Borneo. It says 35 millimeters of rainfall. Do you think that sounds like a lot of rain? Hmm, it's kind of hard for me to visualize what 35 millimeters of rain looks like. Do you think it sounds like a lot of rain? Well, I'm going to show you using a demonstration about how much 35 millimeters of rain is. Are you ready? Let me expand my screen. Okay, so I've taken this container and I marked it at 35 millimeters. Can you see that? Yeah, I just drew on it with a dry erase marker. And I'm going to try to see how many times I can fill this container with cups of water. So what I have here is a pitcher of water and this cup. So looking at this cup and this container, how many times do you think I could fill this cup up and pour it into the container before we hit the 35 millimeter line? I'll give you a second to make an estimate. Have you made your estimate? To be perfectly honest with you, I've never done this myself, so we're doing this together for the first time. I'm really excited. And my estimate is 10 cupfuls. And I'm using my mind to visualize about how much water would go into this cup and then how many times I could do that into this bucket before we fill it up. That's how I'm making my estimate, but I don't really know. So what's your estimate? Tell me. Sounds great. Let's see who's closer. Okay, here we go. Trying to get to 35 millimeters of rain. Now I'm using a very heavy pitcher and I have a towel down in case I spill. So let's see here. Make sure you count along with me. One. Two, three, four, five. 
five. Ooh, we're getting really close. Are we to the line yet? We're not to the line yet. Can you see that? We're almost there. Let's see, I was at five, right? Let's do five and a half. Ooh, not quite. I'll do the other half. Oops, more than half. Ooh, perfect. So it took six cups. How close was that to your guess? I was off by four, so I tried though. Okay, so it took six of these cups to fill this bucket up to 35 millimeters. And I want you to take a look at the bucket one more time to see about how deep 35 millimeters of rain is. About that deep. All right. That really is gonna help me visualize. Okay. So can you visualize 35 millimeters of rain falling in your classroom? What would that look like? Can you picture it in your mind? Wow. Everybody would need to wear their rain boots. We'd all be sloshing around. Can you visualize what 35 millimeters of rain would look like on your school's playground? Yeah, it would probably be a mess. What about over your whole neighborhood? Yeah, that would be a lot of rain. I do want to remind you that rainfall amounts don't tell us how quickly the rain fell. So you could get 35 millimeters of rain by a slow drizzle all day long, or it could just rain for one minute really super heavy and we could get 35 millimeters of rain. So one thing that you should know about weather data is that rainfall amounts don't tell us how quickly the rain fell, whether it was a lot of rain at one time or whether it was a little bit of rain over the whole day. Okay, I have a science puzzle for you. Are you ready? Here's the question. In which city would you need a heavy coat? Newburgh or Oldburgh? One answer would be you would need a heavy coat in Newburgh. And the other answer is you would need a heavy coat in Oldburgh. Which one do you think? Do we have any reason to believe that one answer is better than the other? We don't have any evidence to help us describe Newburgh or Oldburgh to help us make a decision on which one would need a heavy coat. So I want to introduce a new vocabulary word to you, and that word is evidence. Evidence is information that supports an answer to a question. So now we have some evidence to help us answer the Newburgh Oldburgh question. Here's the evidence. Evidence one is someone measured the temperature in Newburgh and it was 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Evidence piece two is someone measured the temperature in Oldburgh and it was 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And evidence piece three is heavy coats are good for the coldest weather. So it sounds like somebody used a tool to take measurements in Newburgh and Oldburgh. Do you remember the name of the tool that we use to take measurements of temperature? Tell me. Yeah, we use a thermometer. Remember in the last lesson we were measuring temperature using thermometers? So it sounds like someone used a thermometer to take a temperature in Newburgh and Oldburgh. Do you think Newburgh or Oldburgh would be the place where we would want to take a heavy coat? I'll give you a second to look at the evidence. Yeah, we would need a heavy coat in Newburgh because it's colder than Oldburgh. That was awesome that we had some evidence to help us solve the question. Now, we have two more pieces of evidence about Newburgh and Oldburgh. The new piece of evidence says someone went outside in Newburgh and said it felt a little cold. Hmm. The second piece of new evidence says someone went outside in Oldburgh and shivered. Hmm. If these were the only pieces of evidence we had, would we be able to convince someone that they need a heavy coat in Newburgh instead of Oldburgh? Tell me what you think. 
Yeah, these pieces of evidence are really hard to compare. They're not actual measurements from a thermometer. And so it's really hard to convince somebody that your answer is right if you don't have a piece of evidence that's really strong. So let's compare the pink evidence and the green evidence. Which pieces of evidence allow us to compare the temperature of, of one place to the temperature of another place? Yeah, the pink evidence is strong evidence. It actually gives us numbers that we can compare because two measurements were taken the same way. What about the green evidence? Yeah, the green evidence is weak. It just sounds like someone's opinion or like somebody went outside and told you what it felt like, but we can't compare those two and actually have a strong argument. So remember that we want to answer the question, which island's weather is most like the weather where orangutans live? But before we can do that, we have to look at and evaluate the evidence sent to us by the Wildlife Protection Organization. We must decide whether it is strong or weak evidence, just like we did with Newberg and Oldberg. So if you have this document, the evidence cards, great. What I want you to do is pause this video, get a pair of scissors, and cut the evidence cards out because we're gonna be sorting them into strong evidence and weak evidence. If you can't find any scissors laying around the house or your brother or sister are using the scissors right now, that's okay. You could just get a marker and you could label each one strong and weak. Are you ready? Okay. So I've labeled the screen with two sides, a, str uh, a strong evidence side and a weak evidence side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna read each evidence card together, and then you're gonna decide whether it goes on the strong side or the weak side. Remember that strong evidence has measurements that are taken that we can compare and that'll really help us have a strong argument. Weak evidence is gonna be evidence that's not easy to compare to other evidence. So let's start with evidence card one. Are you ready? So excited, okay. Evidence card one. Arc Island temperature on one day was recorded as 96 degrees Fahrenheit. Do you think that sounds like strong evidence or weak evidence? That is strong evidence. It has an actual reading from a thermometer tells us a temperature that we could compare to the other islands. So that's gonna be really strong evidence for us. Okay, evidence card two. Arc Island temperature on one day, it was hot. Is that strong evidence or weak evidence? Yeah, that's weak evidence. Just saying that something is hot is not a good way to be able to compare it to other islands. Evidence card three. Arc Island precipitation on one day, there was little rain. Is that strong evidence or weak evidence? Yeah, that's weak evidence. Again, there's no measurement there. Just saying that there was a little rain isn't really going to help us with our argument. Evidence card four, Blue Island temperature on one day, 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Strong or weak? Yep, that's strong. It has an actual measurement. Evidence card five, Blue Island precipitation on one day. The rain filled two bowls. Is that strong or weak? That is weak evidence. Evidence card six, Blue Island precipitation on one day. It was raining. Yeah. That's also weak evidence, does not have a measurement. Evidence card seven, Creek Island precipitation on one day, 20 millimeters of rainfall. Yep, that is strong evidence, very good. Evidence card eight, Creek Island temperature on one day, an ice cube melted when it was left outside. Yep, that is weak evidence. Now I had to make the cards a little smaller so I could squeeze them all in, but we're still doing the same thing. Here's evidence card nine. Creek Island precipitation on one day. The rain filled three mugs. Yep, that is weak evidence. 
Evidence card 10, Creek Island precipitation on one day. There was a lot of rain. Yep, that is weak evidence too. Evidence card 11, Blue Island precipitation on one day, 38 millimeters of rainfall. Yep, that is strong evidence. What about evidence card 12? Creek Island temperature on one day, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Yep, that is strong evidence. Now, evidence card 13 is a little tricky. Orangutans live in some of the hottest, rainiest places on Earth. Now, you may think this is weak evidence because it doesn't have a measurement in it, which for weather data, we're generally looking for a measurement. But this evidence card actually tells us what it is that we're looking for. We're looking for the hottest, rainiest places on Earth. So I'm going to put it over in the strong evidence pile because it's going to help us make our argument when, we, when it comes time to make our argument. Okay, so if you have this document, great. You can take it out now, you can pause the video, and you can fill it out. So what you're going to do is you're going to write down all the strong evidence card numbers here, and you're going to write all the weak evidence card numbers here, and then you're going to select one evidence card that you think is strong and explain why you think it's strong. And then you're going to pick one evidence card you think is weak and explain why you think it's weak. If you have this in your student investigation notebook, great. Pause the video now, fill it out, and then come back together. All right, what you just did is a really, really cool skill. It's called evaluating. You just evaluated a bunch of evidence. Evaluate means to judge how useful or accurate something is. And that's what we just did. We looked at all those pieces of evidence and we decided how useful they were to us. The strong evidence is gonna be useful. The weak evidence is not gonna be useful. So we just evaluated, woo! All right, I've gotten rid of the weak evidence and now I just have the strong evidence because I'm ready to make a decision. I don't know about you. I'm ready to make a decision about which of those three islands is the best one for the orangutan reserve. Are you ready? Let's take all of our strong evidence from the card sort and let's use it to compare these islands. I'm so excited. We've been building up to this. I want to know which island is the best, don't you? Okay, let's put all of our strong evidence into this table. So let's start with temperature evidence. For Arc Island, we know the temperature that was measured on one day was 96 degrees Fahrenheit. On Blue Island, the temperature on one day was 95 degrees Fahrenheit. For Creek Island, the temperature on one day was 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So I just want you to look at those three temperature measurements and decide which island is the hottest. Get it in your mind, ready? Okay, I've got it, do you have it? Now let's look at the precipitation evidence because we're not just looking for the hottest island, we're looking for the rainiest island too. So, oh no. The Wildlife Protection Organization did not send us any comparable data about precipitation for Arc Island. So we can't really compare it. But that's okay, we'll keep going and see about the other two. Blue Island, the precipitation on one day was 38 millimeters of rainfall. And on Creek Island, the precipitation on one day was 20 millimeters of rainfall. So compare Blue and Creek Island and decide which island had the most precipitation. Do you have it? Me too. All right. So we can't compare Arc Island because we don't have enough data. It's just sort of out now because we can't compare it to Blue Island and Creek Island without knowing how much rain fell, even though it is the hottest island. So looking at Blue Island and Creek Island, I'll give you a second, and I want you to tell me which of those two islands is the hottest, Blue or Creek. What'd you say? Tell me. Whisper it. Hottest island is Blue Island. Okay, so between Blue Island and Creek Island, which of those islands had the most precipitation. 
you can tell me. Yeah, it was also Blue Island. Hmm, what do you think? Blue Island looks pretty good. As a matter of fact, I would say Blue Island sounds like the best island since we don't know the precipitation for Arc Island. All right, so now we know which island we think is going to be the best one for the orangutan reserve. Do you agree with me? Great. I use the evidence. So did you. Okay, so let's wrap this up by talking about what our new ideas are. I have the new ideas from the last couple of lessons and the questions that I had. So what is your new idea from this lesson? What did you learn? What's new? Great new idea. My new idea is we can evaluate and compare weather data to solve problems. What are your questions moving forward? Hmm. Cool. My question moving forward is, how do we actually convince the Wildlife Protection Organization that Blue Island is the best island? We're going to have to convince them. They're not just going to take our word for it. We're probably going to have to show them some evidence. So before we go, I want to challenge you to one more weather challenge. I want you to start collecting local weather data. Local means in the place where you are. If you saw the first lesson, you know I'm in Seattle, Washington, and I'm going to be collecting local weather data starting today for the next week. So if you look in your, sci uh, your student investigation notebook, you will see a document like this where you can actually collect local weather data, and you will probably need the help of an adult for this, and here's why. Every day I want you to put the date, the time that you took the weather measurement, the temperature outside, the precipitation, and the cloud cover. So right across here would be one day. Now, I know you probably don't have a thermometer just hanging outside wherever you live to take the temperature, but that's okay. If you ask an adult for help, they can probably go on Google and find out what the temperature is right then. They can also look up what the daily precipitation is in millimeters. So either you can do that with the permission of a parent or adult in your house, or you can ask someone to do that and help you out to get your data. It's okay, scientists share data all the time. So let me show you one day filled out for me. This is April 1st, it's three o'clock p.m. I took the temperature using my thermometer because I do have a thermometer and it was 48 degrees Fahrenheit, which if you visualize that is a little bit warmer than the refrigerator. So it's pretty chilly outside. The precipitation that fell was five millimeters. I looked that up on the internet. And the cloud cover, I looked outside and I saw that it was overcast. You can use this little box right here as your guide, your little cheat sheet for what to write for cloud cover. So today the whole sky was covered with clouds, so I selected overcast. But you can also choose clear, partly cloudy, mostly cloudy, or foggy. And if you need help with that, you can always ask somebody else who's in your house to help you make a decision about the cloud cover. So I want you to take local weather data for wherever you live for the next week. Can you agree to do that? I'm going to do it too. Great. That's it for Chapter 1, Lesson 4. I'll see you next time for Chapter 1, Lesson 5. Bye!